Welcome to day nine of 30 Takes in 30 Days, the NBA season preview series going from the worst to the best of the upcoming NBA season. Here's how the standings look for the series as a whole so far, and the approach to this series being how likely every team is to win a championship, it can get a bit bloated down the bottom with Eastern Conference teams. But then I remember that the West is going to be an absolute bloodbath, and now that the Blazers and Jazz are out of the way as the obviously worst teams in the conference, there's still 13 teams for 10 chances at making the playoffs, which means that more than one team that could be as good as a top four seed in the East can't make it. And the first one of those is the Clippers, because Kawhi Leonard is not playing games this season. Sorry, I said that wrong. Kawhi Leonard is not playing games this season. And I don't mean to be negative, but he's told us himself his knee is never going to be properly healthy. He had a procedure on his knee during the offseason, and while he says he might be able to play the season opener, we've got enough evidence from the last few years that any expectation about Kawhi Leonard playing an NBA game is folly. It's the NBA equivalent of rolling out Frankie Valli and expecting that he's going to sing. And I don't want to suggest that Kawhi doesn't want to play games. I don't think that he's ever sat out games intentionally, nor do I want to apportion any blame on Kawhi. All of the blame belongs to Zaza Pachulia, and we should chase him down with hammers to exact revenge for us missing the true prime of a guy who won two finals MVPs before the age of 27. So, you know, before his prime even started. Here's a take. If Derek Rose and Kawhi Leonard both played out their entire careers without injury, Kawhi ends up with the better record. What do you get out of Kawhi nowadays? Well, last season, he actually played 68 games, the most since he left the Spurs. And in those games, he gave the Clippers 23 points, six boards, and three and a half assists. He was second team All-NBA, and he is still an incredible player, the best all-around forward in the league, not named LeBron James. But over 82 games in a stacked Western Conference with the Clippers in the Pacific Division, which means that they'll play 16 games against the Dubs, Kings, Suns, and Lakers, which might make the divisions relevant again if division wins become a tiebreaker. I think that the Clippers are the odd ones out, the ginger cousins of the Western Conference. You might associate the Clippers with a certain quality. They've been there or thereabouts in the Western Conference for the last decade, decade and a half. But tell me, past Kawhi and James Harden, who else is on this roster that is getting you excited? What faces are being plastered outside the Intuit Dome? Steve Ballmer spent two billion American dollars on this stadium and I'm worried there's no reason to go into it. Hello, Hillary Clinton? Yes, I'll be your speechwriter. All right, let's take a look under the hood and see what's in this depth chart. James Harden at point, yeah, okay. They're gonna try doing an impression of the Harden Rockets, run a billion high pick and rolls and put the ball in James's hands a lot, which is a tactic that didn't even work when James was the MVP. Go miss 27 threes in a row, you bums, and go back to the club, James. Sorry, old habits die hard. But I don't think that in the NBA, where offense is evolving at a rate faster than it can be defended, that doing something which failed in the playoffs every time it was attempted with an older version of the same guy is a good way to put together wins in the regular season nowadays. It's like how the British rocked up to World War One with cavalry and swords and by golly, that gun shoots a million bullets. Sure, that might make Clippers fans furious, but I'm not afraid of 12 people. Terrence Mann at shooting guard, eight points a game the last two seasons for a 27-year-old development player, sure. Derek Jones Jr., what are you doing here? And how are you only making 10 mil a season? Well, he could have cashed in a bit more after that finals run, but another guy who averaged eight points. ESPN has Kawhi at the four, which I suppose he can do if he's there, and Zubac at center. Welcome back, Evita. I don't have a bad word to say about you. The Clippers' sixth man is going to be Norm Powell again, and he was very good in that role for them last year. Nick Batum had one good game for Philly in the play-in, so get him back. Someone's going to play in the fourth quarter. No one really noticed that Chris Dunn resurrected his career over in Utah over the last two seasons and became quite good defensively. And then the roster gets a whole lot of, uh, can I get a... 25 minutes of PJ Tucker at center. How about we shake the jar on Mo Bamba? Want to outshine the song, brah? Kevin Porter Jr. hasn't thrown soup at anyone or been arrested for a while. What's he got? Bones Island, Kai Jones, Amir Coffey. The train's left the station for so many of these guys and it's taking the team with them. Counterpoint, Ty Lue is a genius and his coach team's missing Kawhi to successful seasons in all but two years as head coach in LA. But I'm afraid there's too much talent in the West. Who's the monster that they send out to fight the other teams? Norm Powell called the loss of Paul George an addition by subtraction, which I'm inclined to agree with seeing as they don't have to sacrifice useless fourth quarter possessions to Paul so he can pretend like he's helping the productive miss. But I'll save Paul George discussion for when I talk about Philly later in the series. For the Clippers, they have to compete. They don't have their own pick until 2030, a result of constantly training for superstars while watching the guy that they let go surpass every single expectation anyone had of him. But I don't think they have the troops right now. And this franchise has done so much trading for superstars that they don't have much left in the war chest to improve themselves along the way. So it's time for the Clippers to pay the price for their greed and selfishness and a reminder that you can't just get a new billionaire owner, trade for your entire team, develop no one and expect that everything will be fine. No playoffs for you. All right. That's LA, and apologies that I haven't been keeping to the timeline that this series is titled after. I promise they will all be done by the time the season starts. I intentionally delayed this one because every Friday upload of mine flops. I'll do a couple of double drop days and catch up. These get easier once we get out of the junk zone and I don't have to watch hours of footage to remember who the players are. Grand final preview coming next though. Bye. What a block!